Hey guys, Tara here, bringing you a one of you on today. We are on Crossing in the Woods. Playing for today, spawning in the south, we have Love Nest. As OKW and his loadout is Luftwaffe Ground Forces, Special Operations, and Fortifications. Let's help against him in the north. We have Barton as the Soviets, who has guard motor coordination. Oh, straight away locks and Lynn Lease very early in the match. So notice he's gone for an unusual build, double combat engineers into conscript. Off to an unusual start, but both these players will be training hard for GCS. I believe the ranking captures from auto match for the seeding for the first tournament are uh, today, as of the same day as this replay. So. Uh, Again, their last minute ranking attempts to try and get themselves seated as high as possible. Yeah, these two veterans gonna be duking it out for us today. So yeah, very unusual build from Barton, honestly, double engineer at the start. I wonder why he does that. Sometimes you see people do that when they were, you know, going for like a tier one build. But uh, no tech structure from Barton. Obvious wins that first engagement. The fuel quite handily, but Barton has managed to get himself over here and capture this fuel. It is connected as well. Got two conscripts over here. Doing a bit of peekaboo in the building, making sure that. Loveness can't come and capture the fuel. Loveness in the meantime is going to be putting down some sandbags on his VP. But he gets spotted. Looks like he's going to try complete them. No, maybe not. Looks like Barton was actually shooting at the sandbag itself, not the squad. So <laughs> the squad's still at full health, or close to it. Now the conscript's making a push towards the center. It's not really going to be cutting that much off, so he doesn't have too much to gain. We've got an engagement over here as well. So he should be able to win that. Where's they're pretty heavily outnumbered over here. And meanwhile, Stumpine is pushed in this direction. They've been largely out of combat since the last engagement, though. It's not really what you want in the early game. You really want those Stumpanis to be fighting squads. But I suppose it's better than them taking a bad engagement into a treat. I'm just working his way over here, going for the cutoff on the fuel now. Good plan. It's got a bit of a flank going on here as well. This conscript's in an awkward position. Got a flamethrower coming over though. Cutoff is complete, however. So Lovness fuel control very strong right now. So general map control far superior. So it was like a decent engagement for Barton until these two extra squads arrived, and then it turned into a pretty, pretty shoddy one. Conscript's not very strong at long range compared to the Fox Grenadiers. But Barton did reconnect the fuel. Could have been uh, worse. The enemy has taken our supply sector. So Glovny is going to go for another cutoff, okay, wide off the sandbags here. But as you can see, it's still cover. We've got a cover back there. It's quite hard to wire off sandbags. Here's the cutoff for Glovny. But really struggling to hold on to his side of the map. This is what you tend to experience as Soviets. Especially going for multiple combat engineers instead of maybe one more squad of conscripts. It's a little bit outgunned by the four Fox Engineers and the Stone Pioneer currently. Speaking of that, Stone Pioneer has to retreat. Still on three models though. 
Pretty, oh no, I was going to say, getting very lucky there not to lose another one, but finally drops one close to the end. Has gone for battle group and is the medics already completed. And so, not going to be seeing a flak half track from Lovelace most likely, since he's gone for the medics first. Meanwhile, Barton did himself a dishka. Imagine he probably has medics himself. Yes, he does indeed. Still no tech from Barton though. We're seeing a little bit of a resurgence in the use of this commander recently. I think it's largely because teching up and getting a maxim just isn't very strong. Dishka, even though it got nerfed quite a lot, still a very powerful machine gun. Good suppression and damage. Where's the Dishka? You know, where's the Maxims? Just rubbish. But Lovness has had fast. Oh, he's going for the flak half trick. This is a very late one. I'm actually very surprised to see this. Barton's going for the double Dishka as well. So yeah, you can see Lovnis has, you know, about 60 fuel in the bank when he's making this. At this point right now, he could, you know, build his tech truck, get his tier 4 down. And he's going to go for the flak half track. Just goes decent against the flak half track. Especially when you uh, equip the armor piercing rounds. Oh, could this be a wipe? He's, he switches targets. Yes, there goes a squad of conscripts for Barton. He has managed to cap out over here though, so he's got some uh, good resources flowing in. Still needs to tech though, that's the thing. He looks like he's doing quite quite well currently, but you know he's going to have to spend a lot of time and resources ticking. Probably tier 2 and tier 3. He's probably going to need tier 2 to deal with this half track. STGs should win out over these conscripts here, but you never know. Back half track on the field now, pushing away these squads. It did receive a suppression nerf this patch and also the smoke. Just a bit more munitions to dispense. Jessica pops out of the building. Hoping to get some hits in on the flak after that. Wasn't successful. But Dishka is probably the best against the flak half track. I think the uh, 50 cal does more damage, but the Dishka, the way that it bursts and reloads uh, configured, I mean that it actually fires quite quite effectively when it's suppressed. It can keep duking it out against flak half track even once it's been suppressed. It's going to be a full retreat on the left hand side for Barton. Building his tech now. This goes tier 2 out. He's not going to go for the Zis though. By the time he completes this tech, you know, saves a little bit more fuel. Probably goes straight into the T70. Love Nest already has the Raketon ready. Got a one mine down. Be handy to get another one. This is a very tough portion of the game for Barton. You know, all these Fox are starting to get their STGs. This is the conscripts really start to drop in their performance. Perhaps that's why he only went for three of them and went for the double combat engineer because he knew going for this commander, if you can't get the PPSHs on your conscripts, 
they do really struggle as soon as uh, all the enemy squads get their weapon upgrades. Whereas combat engineers, you know, always have the utility of the flamethrower and the mine sweeping. A calf track over here. Doing some damage. Button has a T70 in production now, though. Grenade goes in. Conscripts late to avoid it. And try hide behind this wood. Just go get herself in position. The car trick has taken a bit of damage. Have to pull back, so still no fuel for Barden. Loveness has had such incredible fuel superiority for the last probably four minutes. Barden's really gonna need this T70 to do some good damage to turn this game back around. Coming out onto this right hand side, looks like it's gonna go for the wipe on these Fox communities instead of trying to chase down Flak after track. Loveness comes out briefly, thinks about the Faust, but can't afford to do it, and he loses the squad. Cross the need to cover there. Good awareness by Barton. Governess being very diligent with his raketin positioning, bringing it up in support of the flat half track. And going for a. Uh, Bit of a cutoff maneuver here. There is a shoe mine right there. Which is standing on top of. Oh my god. And somehow T70 just skims past it. God, that could have been a disaster for Lavnes. Could have lost his stern pioneers there. Oh man, but the T70 doing some crazy damage as well. Almost got the wipe there. Squad's out on negative cover. Very, very lethal. He oh, loses one model from that mine, so... Well worth it. Sandbags get destroyed. Squad closes and tries to get the Faust be unsuccessful. Loveness being a lot more cautious with this black half track now, but it's actually a little bit undefended. Ken's quite far away from it. And it's he's just never repaired it either. It's just got so many mines around the place. Despite that, still got a lot of weapon upgrades too. Just shows how strong his map control has been so far. And just how hard it is to fight. Going for a strategy like this. See me already vet one. Halfway to vet two as well. I've just got the triple cap. Points are ticking against Barton very, very quickly. To put his flak base in a very defensive position, just covering the cutoff here. Not that it's that important because this commander doesn't really have a bombing run. Unlikely to be harassed. Crew stand ready. I'm just gonna sit there soaking up the damage and as long as he can complete the capture. 
actually comes out of suppression there. Oh, Barton loses another squad. That one completely unnecessarily. That, that was a really bad loss. T70. That's, that's the second T70 now for Barton. Looks like he's going to go all in on a T70 rush. Double T70 rush. But Loveness does have Panzer IV in production. So Barton, he's got a strike now before this P4 arrives. He has built himself a Zis though, so that's at least uh, something to help against the Panzer IV. Don't, doesn't have anti tank grenades though. Only got two conscripts as well. Oh! Oh, and he gets the wipe long range! Rakitin is there. But uh, missing its shots. Okay, well, that was really lucky long range wipe. That T70. Squadron still in this game. This has a huge tick advantage though, and this P4 is looking angry. He builds a combat engineer squad. It'll be interesting to see if he goes for another sweeper squad or a flamer. Here comes the P4. Run straight into the Zis. Takes one shot, backs away. Thought he might go for an attack ground there, but not. Oh, here comes T70. Gonna run straight into the Rakitin. Takes a Faust. Probably gonna be the end. Yeah, there it goes. Nice Rakitin positioning there by Love Nest. And this is just a nightmare scenario if you're playing as Soviets when the uh, Rocket W player still has this flak half track on the field. You just feel so oppressed every time you try to push out any region of the battlefield. So this is there, and he does have AT grenades now. Still only has two squads of conscripts though, so the snares are not going to be easy to come by. It's going to have to be quite judicious with his uh, conscript usage. You can't just chuck them into the arms away. Try and target the Obers. Shots getting blocked by the boxes. Now they're starting to get through. Oh, and here comes the Rakitin. It's back from its retreat. Barton sensing that something's wrong. Backs away. If you're up against a really good player like this and they're kind of staying in an engagement that's not really to their advantage, you can assume that they've got some kind of unit sneaking up to turn the tide in their favor. So, uh, just play cautiously, basically. Units charging down the middle here. Barton's gone for another T70. Still hasn't repaired up his Panzer IV. His Doom Pioneers are out here on the front lines. This is in a good position. One hit off, flak off track has to back away. Didn't have munitions for the smoke, the other ones he might have used it. He's going to come back in now. But Kevin reveals itself, gets one shot off. Conscript Urang into the capture circle. He certainly has to back away. There's conscript repairs on this commander, remember, so. Can help keep your vehicles on the battlefield. Goes for the Zis Barrage. T-70. P4 
Coach looking to flank. But I'm having a hard time pushing out in this region. Just so he gets a couple shots. If he's left this Dishka here for ages, I'm very surprised he hasn't brought it up here to help in the fight. He's been sitting in his base for a really long time. Button does have control about half the map though, so VPs are draining, but he's got decent map control. But this is right on his cutoff here. Oh, and he's getting shredded as he tries to repair. The disc is finally coming back out onto the battlefield, but this is so late. P4 has been repaired now. Barton investing in another Zis. I think that's a good decision. But it's not going to be enough to cover this, this whole map. And Loveness goes for the infantry support gun. when he is in combat. Toughness for a kid positioning has been so good this game. It really has. Just go wheeling its way across the negative cover. Yeah, pardon. A bit of a miss, miss micro there. Control not looking that sharp. He's cut off. He's draining on VPs. 184 remaining. Things looking quite grim for him currently. But needs to turn this one around. I think he needs to kill the Panzer IV. Honestly. Should uh, give him a chance to get back in the game. Gone for another T70. Oh man. Oh, is this Baden or is this Von Ivan? Well, we'll have to see how it pans out. He's got the two Zis, so they're going to be able to deal with the vehicles. And he's going to have three T70s. They're going to have to deal with the infantry. How much damage can he inflict with these units, though? It's going to come down to some uh, crazy micro. He still has this mine back here, which could come into play. I think Baden's done any sweeping recently. Mine over here as well. Here come the T-70s. Coming in from the side. We're getting changing position. Just double tap. Destroy the flak half track. Looks like one of these is going to go down to the P4. But he clears out the Rakitten. This is starting to fire on the P4, getting two good hits in there. So a uh, pretty good first strike there for Barton taking down the flak half track and getting a Rakitin that he can steal, which is great as Soviets. Six man Rakitin is so strong. And now he's going to town. Looks like Lovney is going for the Panther though, interesting choice. Probably the wrong choice though. I feel like another Panzer IV would be a better choice. Because in situations like he can already quite handily beat the T70. So he doesn't need the Panther's like extra armor and health to deal with the vehicles of Baden. And if he deals with the vehicles and then he has to fight against the Zis, much better to have the Panzer IV which can do more damage to the Zis than the Panther can. I think this is the wrong choice from Love Nest. Going for the Panther here. It's about to run over a mine, perhaps. Perhaps not. He has gone for Luftwaffe ground forces. Don't think we've seen any usage of its abilities yet. No, I'm not 100% sure on that. Brave infantry have made the ultimate sacrifice. It's building so close to death. Could have gone down to the ISG shell. Barton rebuilding a T70. T70 light tank has arrived. Coming into the center, he's getting so low on VPs, he's got to make something happen here. Getting creeping up through the middle. T70 is doing good damage to the advancing infantry.
It's just now being used in different angles. Bouncing most of its shots, but still enough to deter Lovemis vehicles. He's going to come in for some secure mode action. Ooh. It nearly gets decreed. He's still going to try to use it to cap, but very risky. No, there it goes. And now he's using the secure mode. P4 takes a big double tap from the Zis. And they both miss. Gliding with this here. On their killing blows. Looks like the ISG is going to get decreed here. I'm picking up a bit of momentum. Okay, we're seeing Valiant Assault being called in here from Loveness. Perhaps also the recon plane, I think. I'm not sure. You're sprinting around. Oh, and it looks like one of these this is going to get decrewed here. No, perhaps not. Just comes in with the suppression just before. Still, Barden has. Stabilized now. I'm just in an awkward position because he's up against so many team weapons, but it's very hard to squeeze a walking Stuka into your build in a 1v1. Squad ran into a mine. Before not quite getting the kill though. It's just retreating. Perhaps they're going to get reinforced and healed up for the next engagement. And losing that Rakitin turning out to be a big headache for Love Nest. The third anti tank gun making. Like much harder for his vehicles and he runs over the second mine that was over here. I don't think that's going to result in a kill but it's going to be uh, out for repairs for a long time and Barden starting to take control. He's a pretty formidable army. I think this panther was just a really bad choice. I love Nest. Oh, Faust. That's probably going to be the end of T70. Oh, abandoned. Oh, so unlucky. Fresher Kitten. T70's got to be on their toes. Use value assault there, didn't get much value from it. Barton still in control. Oh, he gets out of the building just in the nick of time. Looks like two models got squashed inside as he was getting out. Good reactions by Barton. Pairing up that abandoned one as well. Moving forwards. It's one more hit to kill. He's blitzing. Oh, and he misses. I think that was an attack ground. Panther doing some risky stuff there, but still in there. Still alive. Bouncing quite a few shots. Anti-tank guns waltzing their way forwards here though. Hobers are there. Panther now not bouncing the shots. Oh, he just gets away. Panther's going to be out for repairs now again. It's one of the things, the uh, changes to the Panther with the lower frontal armor means you do often spend a lot more time repairing it now.
Kid 3 T70 goes down. Nice execution there by Love Nest. Sneaking there at Kid and Fords and getting the Faust off. Hopefully he doesn't lose his Rakitten now. There it goes. A bit late, but didn't end up mattering. So that ISG did get recruited by Love Nest. Doing its best. It's perhaps a little bit large for the ISG to be super effective, but at least it can soften up these anti-tank guns a little bit. Just could get decrewed there. Do you see any in here doing some damage? P4 blitzing. Oh, could have gone down there. Using the Valiant Assault, charging around the side. Getting a Faust off, and he's going to retreat. Oh, with the T70 doing massive damage, the squad retreating around a terrible retreat path. Almost loses it. Rakitten coming forwards. Panthers back up for action. The double anti tank guns going to work. Some uh, good bounces. Here comes T70, gonna flank this Rakid, and he's getting super aggressive with it. But knew exactly where it was because of this combat engineer scouting it out. Looks like it's gonna escape though. A bit of a lucky break. Very easily could have gone down there. Barton hanging in there though, still got control of two VPs. I'm just having trouble breaking his line. Looks like he's invested in a third Dishka now. Gonna make running these troops around, even with the Valiant Assault, much more challenging. Lovnish does have quite a lot of resources. Could go for his mechanized regiment. Get the extra repairs, which would be quite nice in this position. And give him the option of going for the walking Stuka. I would like to see that. Good flank on this Dishka, doing some good damage with that Panzer IV. Rakitten came forwards, putting pressure on the two T-70s. Now we've got troops charging forwards, going off the anti-tank guns, but they do knock out the Panzer IV. One AT gun goes down. Button actually went for, I didn't even notice, he went for a third Zis. Oh, and here come the Dishkas. Lovnish needs to capitalize on this, try kill or steal these Zis. Do something with this Panther. What's his, what is he doing with these Obers? They're gonna go down here on retreat. Oh, surely not. Oh, that is so lucky. That is insanely lucky. Panther comes forward now, a bit, bit later than I was hoping for. And has uh, kind of steady his course. During this push, you know, Loveness did lose a bit, but did actually control the VPs for a bit, but I'm ticking under 100 now. Looks like he is building his tech truck. And we're seeing the mechanized measurement HQ from him. But will it be the walking Stuka? That's the uh, big question. But in continuing to invest in T70s, does have a lot of fuel, so could have ticked up, gone for tier 4, but 
just all in on this T70 strategy and it actually seems to be working out quite well for him because as I said it's just so hard to squeeze a walking stuka into your build in a 1v1 situation but he's kind of exploiting that here I mean, he's perhaps being a bit, bit late to adapt you know he might not have had supply limit before, before he lost the P4 but could have had this truck up for a long time speeding up his repairs on the Panth Panther and P4 and then as soon as he lost the unit then could have gone for the walking stuka if he does go for the walking stuka needs to get some mines now you know like his base entrance for example then a marauding attack to knock it out Flank here. Is there a kitten? Okay, it's coming out of the base. Do you see him? He's doing good damage. Almost getting the white there. Panther comes forward now, but. The T gun instantly positioned to do crazy damage to it. That's done a bit up as well, get the rate of fire bonuses going. I'm just going to troll the VP slow, 92, 91. Oh, this has been bleeding. Does not hit the manpower spear to build anything from his tech structure he just completed? Sandbags down in the center so he can hold his position, keep the VPs ticking. This one now uh, on recon mode. He's trying to use the tank guns to knock out the sandbags. It's gonna finally work. Ice G has just been shelling away there. Remember, I've got decrewed and it's already back up to 14 kills. Okay, a recon plane coming in for Loveness. Those conscripts go down so quickly. Smoke comes in. Barton going to continue using attack ground through the smoke. So is Loveness onto the T70s. Just goes crept into the center. Bundle grenade or frangible? Bundle grenade. Disco gets decrewed there. The kitten forcing away the T70s. Loveness hasn't made anything, has he? He must be thinking about going for the King Tiger. Kitten is right there. Panther could be in trouble. The anti tank guns are lining up as well. Panther, uh oh! In trouble! Blitzing away. Narrow escape there. It's camouflage for kittens. Very, very sneaky. Almost has held on to the VPs for quite some time now. I'm about to tick under 50. Loveness has been very good about continuously using the barrage on his infantry support gun. And it looks like just from manpower losses he's just having trouble trying to save up for his next purchase. He probably could have squeezed the walking stuka in here. Which 
would be, you know, pretty reasonable with this commander. He's got the recon plane to give it some sights. Let's get out of the location of those team weapons. Using the Valiant Assault again. Clears out. Machine gun in the center. Kitten approaching, forcing T series away. T series almost goes down there. Button has spread out. Got the neutralize on the side. Omni's also spreading out, but there is a machine gun right here, uncovering his bases effectively. Gets a lucky kill on that mine. Just been there most of the match. Not sure how he had sight of that there, but a couple hits him with is this. Oh, that's the highly vetted Raketon now. Getting the plus 25% damage. <coughs> oh, excuse the sneeze. Uh oh. No, he just got to vet 5. Don't lose it like this. Oh, t he's coming in trying to get the clear. Oh, close call. Straight away, Panther appears, gets blasted by the Zis. Lovely's in control of the VPs, though. Putting the pressure on Barton to make something happen. That's going for the walking Stuka. And it comes. Straight down the center, clears out the Dishka, does some damage to the Zis as well, but doesn't knock it out. Oh, and could this be the end of the Panther? Not quite, but a close call, very, very close call. Panther needs to go back for repairs. So there's this actually ends up getting cleared by the infantry support gun. This is for Kitten. Three VPs remaining, but game still on knife's edge. Oh, is that the end? That is the end of the T70. The Vet 5 Raketon doing the damage. Let's have the repair pioneers from this now as well. So Panther's going to be back on the field very shortly. Series. He's just building more and more of them. They're going to be replacing his infantry now. He's got no conscripts left. Almost out of support weapons as well. It's just going to be pure T70 action. They can cap, so why not? The problem is, like this strategy might be okay for Barden if Loveness was also on low VP, low amount of VPs, but Loveness still way ahead. 300 remaining. Thing is though, I don't think Lovnest has planted uh, any mines to try and defend this walking Stuka. So if that this gets picked off by the T-70s, Biden could be uh, in a pretty reasonable position once more. He's using the ISG smoke to try and open up a... BP capture in the middle. Got three T-70s ready and waiting there. Panther's behind. Recon plane coming in as well. T-70s on this side. Doing crazy damage as Rakitin reveals itself, but this is just too many T-70s. They're going to knock it out. One of them goes down. So is the Vet 5 Raketon. Now the Panther's going to have to get out of there as the anti tank guns position themselves. Is there a Faust available? No, it's on cooldown. Panther wants to get the kill on this last T70 Raketon. And is this hot on its heels? Looks like that. 
was a whiff. Panthers goes rear armor exposed, taking a lot of damage here. T70 is doing crazy damage. Get a wipe there. So, uh. Looks like Lovness managed to recover the Rakitin he, he lost, but. He's still in a tough position here. Oh, what's he doing with this Panther? Seems very risky trying to bring this out to fight on this low health. He knows how many AT guns are floating around. Okay, it looks like he's going to bring it back for repairs now. Tank guns creeping forwards. gets one shot off on T70. Now another one. T70 is charging forwards though. Gonna go get the wipe. Panther's back here. He needs to bring it out for support. Rakin's gonna go down to this massive swarm of T70s. Another squad's gonna go down as well. One of the T70s goes down but there are two anti-tank guys right there in position. Panther can't chase any further. This is a prime time for the walking Stuka. Straight down the center. Doesn't do it though. Must be very good with his infantry support gun micro, however. He's just constantly firing, but I've only suffered a, a lot of losses there. Lost two squads of infantry and his Rakitin. Button on the other hand, just losing the one T70. Building another T70. Panther V4 now. Oh, I'm kidding. Doesn't get crude. Can't escape. Get 3 T70 doing some big damage, and here comes the Walking Stuka finally. Knocks out that stolen Rakitin. Good pick up there. Should give the Panther a bit more room to breathe now. He's getting a bit more aggressive now that he knows the. Uh, Oh no! Oh my god. Who's gonna try crew the Rakitin with his overs? I was like, what are you doing man? Panther being a bit timid here. He's making use of the recon mode now. Okay, he's calling in airborne assault in the middle. Does some uh, machine gun action. Then, uh,. Brings in some anti-tank planes after that. Needs sight for the anti-tank planes to come through though. Doesn't have sight of these currently. Could do a recon plane. Seems like a bit of a waste of munitions so far. Creeping forwards with the Rakitin. You want VPs left for button. Obers now have a permanent sprint out of combat. And they're coming over. Kills the Vet 3 T70. There it goes. Let me smoke this off. T70 comes in with secure mode, the other one. Or oh, they just take off secure mode and go ham on their squad. Looks like it's gonna go down. It's gonna start the chase. Panther coming over. The squad survives. V4 
BPs are stored currently. Squad over here managed to capture this one. I'm looking a bit run down on his army size, but Lovnest also, despite having like a 20 supply advantage, doesn't feel like that large of an advantage because of the walking Stuka. Which is very handy, but it's not really uh really been using it to its full effect this match, I don't think. Maybe it's it when it's ready to fire for quite extended periods of time. over here now. Ogre's also healing when they're out of combat. T-70s! Coming in! No mines still over here from Lovnish, remember. Kitten being brought up in support. Panther is nearby. The Kitten positions itself nicely on this incoming assault of T-70s. Panther on the move, misses the killing blow on the T-70 there. One T-70 goes down. Huffman is trying to clear out these two AT guns there, they're both dead. Panther has free reign now. Looks like he's caught on a second Panther. Another T-70 goes down. Fish Panther on the hunt. The other one back there with the damaged engine. Button recruits two AT guns. Another T-70 goes down. It looks like Loveness wants to pull back. Try to avoid losing both his Panthers to these AT guns. That was a really good engagement for Lovnes, taking out almost every T-70 and the AT guns. Squad coming in from the side, mopping up the rest of the Barden's army. Repaired, so can't help her against these T-Series button, pumping out a few more of them. Six VPs left for Bun, he's on death's door. He's going to work on the squad, trying to cap the center. Panther's been repaired. Ready to come out and support. And she managed to squeeze the squad over to this side, do some capping. Both Panthers now on the battlefield. Barton recruiting all these AT guns though, there are a hell of a lot of them strewn about the battlefield. Get the forcing away that T-70. And Dishka from the other side. I've a bit low on infantry for capping though at the moment. T-70's coming through the middle. Panthers rotated around now here as well. And Stuka, ooh, just grazing the AT guns. The enemy has destroyed one of our vehicles. Panthers not quite getting the kill here, but Bun is draining out currently. The enemy is encroaching on our territory. And uh 
Sticks down to zero. Hard fought match between these two players. Good match as well. Loveness showed very strong infantry support gun play. Barton also did a very good job. It's very hard to micro the strategy he was doing, controlling that many units. But he executed it well. Lovenest just had uh, such a big advantage right from the start of the match. It's just so hard as Soviets when you're not using PPSH conscripts. And uh, Lovenest ends up taking it. Well played. And uh, I'll wrap on that, guys. If you like your game to be cast by me, details in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.